Hello, hello, it's your friend Double Light, and we're here with um, a kind of side Dominions 4 video. So I'll be real with you peeps, um, it's 7.30 a.m. on a work day, I've been awake since like 3.30, I'm pretty damn depressed. I think I'm going into a depressive cycle, and I just had no ability to do an actual recording um, today. Um... I was going to do a game dev video and I record half of it, but I just start feeling really anxious about trying to design and talk at the same time. So I think what I might do for the next one is just do some stuff and then record after the fact and talk about what stuff I did, since I, the ideas I have in my head are a little bit more complex. Anyway, for this video, I'm hoping it will be pretty quick, but I've already spent a minute on the intro. Anyway, for this video, I'm going to kind of go over some different God strategies. I know I'm probably speaking to the choir a little bit on this because I have a feeling that a lot of you that are watching my Dominions 4 videos are already Dominions 4 players. That being said, I this is both for people who are curious about the game, that have seen some of my videos and want to learn more, and also as a way for me to get more information so if any of you have tips or corrections, I'd love to hear them. Um, every time one of you comments on my videos, it's just super helpful. So I've kind of, through experience and some reading online, have kind of determined five different um, strategy, major god design strategies for Dominions 4. So I'm just going to kind of go through each of the five um, as I understand them. So, and I haven't planned this at all. This is just like I'm desperately trying to figure out something uh, to talk about. So here we go. Um... I just want to also real quick, I just want to check this out. Okay. So strategy one, I'm just going to call high scales. You don't really care that much about what your pretender does. You just want to set yourself up to have a really good nation. So ideally, the things that you're looking for are fairly high dominion, so that it's cheaper to increase your dominion. You want it to be a cheap god so that um, you can put more money into scales. And having a couple of high single schools of magic, especially ones that you fill out some of your weaknesses, are really nice, just so that your god can cast some research spells or cast some other spells later. I personally like high fire, if I can get it, for um, fires from above, as a cheap way to whittle down enemy squares. I find that the um, immobile... Gods are fairly useful for this. They're decently cheap in terms of um, point cost, and they tend to have decently high dominion as well. So let's just check out sorcery. So-so research, death magic one, which I also like because then you can summon banes. So I'd probably put death up to level four. And astral, which has a lot of benefits late game. And again, dominions four, new magic paths four. Here we have really deep into nature. New magic paths are a bit more expensive. And you get Ivy Lord if you want to summon a bunch of um, vine dudes, which is, you know, whatever. Here we have a little bit of variety in our magic. Here we have a little bit deeper into fire, which again, I said I overall like. And here we have deep into death. So I like the idea of being able to Bane Lord spam later on. And death also has a couple of other good summons. So, unlike, you can't really go wrong with a death strat. So let's start with Lord of the Underworld. And again, pretty good dominion. So first of all, we're just going to imprison it straight off. We want the extra points. Now let's go up to seven dominion. Six is really the minimum you ever want to do. And nine gets you awe, which we don't really need because we're not doing much combat. So we'll stick with seven. And let's go up to death four so that um, we can summon Bane Lords. So right off the bat, we have 500 points to go with. Pump up growth, pump up order, pump up that. We already still have 150 points. Boom. We have all positive scales and we have a little bit of death. That's it. Can't get one on luck. Since we have such high income and stuff, I'll actually take one point of heat um, so we can get a point of luck. 
Um, just so that we won't have events that often, but when we do, they'll be hopefully really good. Um, that's just kind of personal preference. If we wanted to do more um, scales, we could try to pump one of uh, more spells. We could try to pump one of them up. So let's get the Minor Bless of Fire. And I'd probably do something like that. Or maybe even, depending on how resource intensive we are, swap out some of that. Again, still good. If we wanted to do 4 and 9, which is a lot more expensive, and we're kind of drifting away from the scale strat at this point, we could still pretty easily do that. No, that doesn't work. Um, let me see. We could still pretty easily do that and still have quite good scales. So plus income, plus unrest reduction, plus resources, plus supplies, plus growth, minus events, and plus research. That's nice. Kind of want to save this god, actually, for my next pan game. Um, cool. And I've been doing all these for Pangea just because... I know Pan has a decent range of gods. So next up, um, kind of a similar strat in some ways, a high blessing strat. Um, so we kind of veered towards that at the end of that god, but let's try to do that again. Um, I really like water as a bless, so I'm going to try to find a god that has decent water. Um, this is kind of what I did for another one. Uh, I'm not so big on wind. Let's see. Um, that's pretty good. Yeah, I'm not so much a, a fan of the wind. No, no, no. Oh! Bountiful Forest has more water than nature. Weird. But let's go with that. So, we want a 9 bless of water, because that gives us quickness and better defense. And let's go with a 9 bless of nature, which gives us regeneration and HP. Other good blesses are fire gets you flaming weapons, earth gets you reinvigoration, which is really nice for mages and protection. Um, again, there are other god choices you can do. You can do a similar god choice to a rainbow mage, which is what I talked about later. But I like to do a god that can actually do some stuff later in the game, and besides just be a research bot. Um, so this is decent, but what I kind of want to do is um, two minor pluses. That's attack. That's not so good. There, so we get some reinvigoration, which helps with our mages a lot. We're going to imprison. We'll go up to six. Okay, now we still have some room to play. So let's do one of my favorite ways to get some more points. We increase our luck. Oh, wait. Increase our luck and decrease our order so that we get a lot of events, but they're generally pretty good. Take one in Sloth, that's generally not too bad, especially if we're low resources. And let's take one in Heat. So now we have a pretty good Bless going. Um, we have some design points left over, and our scales aren't terrible. Um, so that's kind of a Blessing Focus God. Again, you can try to go really deep into two of them to get the um, greater boosts. In my recent TNG game, I got nine water and nine death. So they attack twice per turn with life-sucking weapons, and that was really cool. Um, I'm going to cancel that one. Create a pretender. Let's see if I can remember all the, all the distinctions I made. Okay, so we've got scales, we've got blessing, the remaining three. Um, next one, let's do awake. So this is the one I did for um, my Pelagia game, so you've already seen this. 
but we're going to go with an Earth Serpent. Awake Pretenders generally have some form of fear, um, because that makes them harder to hit. Some form of recuperation so they can heal afflictions, because since they're fighting in melee a lot, they're going to rack up a lot of afflictions very fast. Regeneration is also nice. And good base stat, so amazing strength, amazing protection, good attack. And a quick reminder that, um, yeah, how cheap are you? Wow, you are really cheap too. And a quick reminder that gods automatically have their blessing. Now, since the base protection is so high, we really don't need to go into earth that much. But let's go into water. And remember, we need them to be awake. Getting nine dominion is nice for awe, but not the most necessary. So, again, let's do that. And try to take a couple minuses here and there. So we might not be able to go full nine, but let's try. I'm gonna put a lot of eggs into one basket here. And here we go, so our scales are pretty sucky. Can we get one more in Dominion? No. But our god is going to kick some serious ass while fighting, and the goal is just to have this god spread as early as fast as possible, as early as possible, and just wreak havoc. Um, I don't really go with this strategy very often. It just doesn't suit my playstyle, and I usually get my god killed by getting overconfident. But it works really well in my Plagia game, so if you want to see it in action, check that one out. A similar idea, and one that was more popular in Dominions 3 than in this game, is the idea of a super combatant. So I think the big, one of the big super combatants in Dominions 3 was the Prince of Death. And the idea of a super combatant is kind of like an awake pretender, in that they're going to be attack based, but they're meant to be attack based later in the game when you can deck them out with armor and spells. Um, so the idea is they cast some defensive buffs on themselves and then just destroy entire armies by themselves. So one of the reasons the Prince of Death is popular is, um, A, you can give it a death weapon fairly, fairly easily. It has fear 13, so good luck trying to hit it. Um, and it's flying so it can just go right to the back lines and kill their mages. Not great protection, but you'll mitigate that with their armor and their skills. And overall, good strength and above average attack and defense. Decent hit points. The other um, pretender I've seen that's, that's apparently good for super combatant, it's weirdly the Ghost King. Again, you get the fear going. You get an aura of chill that damages everything. It's ethereal, so it's hard to hit with non-magic weapons. And it actually constantly spawns ghosts. So it has good defense. So even though it's stats don't look great. It has a number of other things going for as far as being a super combatant goes. So what I would probably, let's work with the Ghost King. So what I would probably do here is give it a little bit of fire to give it a little extra attack. We're okay with it being dormant or imprisoned. Let's do dormant for now. Um, and we have a lot of room to work with still. Let's a little. Uh, let's not worry about the extra death. No. Um. Do we want to be regenerating? That sounds nice. So we can give it regeneration, and everything else can stay more or less the same. Um. We try to take another point in luck to mitigate a little bit. Um. But yeah, so that's the idea of a super... I don't... I've never used a super combatant. Um, I've, I've always messed them up whenever I've tried using them. But they're a, a, a possibility. I'm kind of going in order of what I use most frequently. Um, my level of expertise, so I'm not like talking out my ass. And last but not least, another strategy I, I don't think I've ever used is a rainbow. So for rainbows, here's the key. New magic costs 10. You also want um, research. So great sages is as generic as you can get. Good research, 
inspires your other researchers, adept researcher. Just generate tons and tons of research. And this entire row is basically all of that. So our grain transfer sucks. Screw that. Um, we get some fire going. Um, I'm just going to kind of go through these and see what they do. Yeah, I think the Great Sage looks really good. So let's go with the Great Sage. And again, we're a rainbow. So let's see if we can do this. Maybe I'll be able to just straight up do this. Yeah. Straight up, we just did that. Um, so they can cast any of the searching spells. Oh, we should, we should, this is kind of insane. I never even tried this. Um, so they can cast any of the searching spells. Their inspiring researcher kind of picks the um, counteracts the drain a little bit. Aside, you never want drain three because you get some, there's some really bad events related to drain three. Um, what I would do in this case actually is increase heat by one, decrease oh, decrease drain by one. Um. You don't need to have literally everything, although you kind of have a cool bless going here. Um, and you really don't want imprisoned because you want to get them researching. You know, if I wanted to cut out one of the magic, um, to see if I can get to awake, let's see if I can do that. So let's see if I can cut out air, and we're working with Pangea, so we already have good nature. So we can cut those two out entirely, so that we can have him awake and researching right off the bat. And I'm also going to save this one, I think. Since we have a librarian going here, only one Giles. All priest Giles. So yeah, so that's the five real main pretender builds as I see them. As you can see, there's a lot of overlap. Um, blessing can be good with scales. Blessing can be good with um, Rainbow, but in general, this is what I see as the main strategies. Uh, I might try a couple of them out now that I'm thinking about them more. It's inspiring me a little bit. Please, if you have any advice or any corrections, leave them in the comments. I really appreciate it. Um, or a, I hope, and I hope this helped any newbies who's who are trying to get their head around the creation process, as it can be really lengthy and complicated. But I hope you enjoyed this video. It really perked me up, actually. Um, I'm feeling a lot better than I did when I started. Um, hope everyone has a great day, and until next time, double bite out.